What's up everybody and welcome to part five of my Git tutorial series. In the previous video, we have seen how to work with branches. And in this video, we're gonna see how we can work with the remote repository. And therefore, uh, we are going uh, to use GitHub. So if you don't have an account yet, then you uh, should create one, which is for free if you want to follow along. And as a side note, I want to mention that uh, we're going, we're only going to cover how to use the remote, uh, as an individual. So we're not going to cover how collaboration works on GitHub. Okay. So, uh, when you have created, uh, an account, then you can click here on the top bottom on this plus sign and then, uh, say create new repository. Then here you can give it a name. And normally you should obviously give it a name that describes a project. So in our case, that would be then a tic-tac-toe game. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to call this uh, Git tutorial. tutorial. Then here we can give it a more detailed description. Then we can uh, decide if we want to, uh, if the repo should be public or private. We're going to uh, choose public because we want to uh, share our project so that other people can see it. And then here, we're not going to check this box here, initialize the repo with a readme. And, and that's because just as it says here, we can skip the step if we are importing an existing repository, which is what we are doing. So with that now, we can create the repository. And then here on the next page, uh, Git tells us what we need, uh, GitHub tells us what we do next. So we have our, uh, we have our remote repository, but it is still empty. So we need to populate it with it. And therefore we are going, and here we have uh, three different options and we are choosing the second one here because we want to push an existing repository from the command line. So therefore we just need to uh, run these two commands in our command line. So let's just copy this first one here and then let's open git bash and let's copy this. And here the actual command is uh, git remote add. So this adds then the remote. After that, we can specify what the name of the remote should be. And by default, this, uh, or it's uh, generally called origin. And then after that, we uh, give the URL URL where uh, the remote is living. So now let's add this remote uh, to our local repository. So if we uh, look at the slides again, what we have now is, so this is what we had before. And then now we added a remote repository, but this is still empty. So now we want to push our local commit history to the remote repository. And that's uh, what this other command here does. So let's copy this. And here uh, the actual command is git push. So with that we can push our uh, local repository to the remote. Then we have to specify where we want to push it. So to the remote, to the origin, and then what we want to push. So we want to push our master branch. And this uh, dash u option here, this just makes sure that our local, that our local master branch is going to track uh, the remote master branch. And we're going to see what that means in a moment. So, so currently, uh, if you look now here at our uh, repository on GitHub, this is uh, what it looks like, right? So let's now run this command to push our local uh, commit history to the remote repository. So now we've done that. And now if I uh, refresh this page here, then you can see now that we have our project uh, on GitHub. So here's our game.py file, hyperfunctions.py, the readme, and the .git ignore. Okay, so now uh, that we have uh, our remote set up, let's see what a typical workflow could look like. So therefore, let's say in our next coding session, what we want to do is we want to make the game board or the game in general look somewhat nicer. So for example, 
if we run it again quickly python game.py so what it now looks like is that we have here the zeros and these brackets and we want to get rid of them and then we have player one and two and what we would like to have is uh, to call those players player x and o okay so that's the goal so let's uh, interrupt this so uh, that's what we're going to do now so in helper functions.py we need to import or use this import statement here at the beginning of the file then uh, we need to replace some lines in the show function so uh, 27 to 29 so those and then uh, let's save it that's it for the help of the uh, help of functions the pi fire and then in game.py we simply need to rename uh, the players here okay let's save that and now let's run the game again uh, to see if it works so python game.py three rows again and now we don't have these brackets and the zeros anymore and we have now player x so let's uh, play position one one and then we have the screen x and now player o uh, it's players o turn so let's uh, just play zero zero and there we have then the o okay so the code is working let's interrupt the game again so now uh, we want to create a commit for that so let's run git status again and here we have game.py and helper functions .py uh, as modified so let's add those to the staging area and now let's create a commit for that and let's call this uh, let's write the commit message as um, name players x and o uh, instead of one and two okay so it's our commit message now let's run uh, the log again or let's look at the log again uh, graph so now you can see our local master branch is uh, one commit ahead of the remote master branch and just uh, uh, to mention it here uh, uh, as we said before we called uh, the remote origin so that's why at this point I was called origin slash master so this is where the master branch of our remote repository is so that means uh, remotely we still uh, uh, the players are still called one and two so let's see that here in game.py here uh, players are still one and two and as i was said before now we are one commit ahead and if i run get status again we also get it's information here so here it says your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit and that's uh, because and we see this information because earlier when we pushed uh, our local repository to the remote we used the dash u option uh, to set up our uh, to set up our local master branch to track the remote master branch okay so now let's say we are satisfied with our code and we would like our uh, our remote repository to have the most up-to-date version of our code so we want to push now uh, our uh, updates to the remote master branch again we can do that with the git push command so we're going to say simply then git push and we want to push to origin and we want to push what we want to push is the local master branch so now let's run this again and this will now again push our local repository to the remote and now if i refresh the page we should then see that here we have then players x and o and not one and two anymore so and that's the case so now if i run the log again we can see that master and origin master are now at the same commit so that's how we can push 
uh, our local changes to the remote. So let's now look again at the slides to visualize what we have done. So uh, we created the remote repository, then we populated it with our local repository, then we created a new commit where we named the players X and O instead of one and two, and then we pushed our local mass, uh, our local repository, uh, our local commit history to the remote repository. Okay, so that's how we can uh, push changes to the remote, but we can also do it the other way around, where we then uh, pull pull changes from the remote to the local repository. But here, as a side note, I have to mention this is probably not very typical when you're working alone on a project, but it's more necessary when you are working uh, collaboratively on a project in a team. But nevertheless, I want to show how that works. So let's say we go back to our repo and then we realize that there is actually a typo in the readme. So here uh, the letters A and E were mixed up. And since that is a very minor change, we can do it right here on GitHub. Therefore, we press this button here and then we can edit uh, the readme. So let's just fix this typo. So now it's create. And then here at the bottom, we can uh, write our commit message. So let's say fix typo in readme. And then we can commit uh, the changes. So now uh, we've created a commit on GitHub uh, and this uh, readme is fixed. So now, uh, however, if we again run the log, then we can see that we don't have this uh, change or this commit locally yet. So uh, in our readme that we have locally, uh, there's still this typo, right? So that's because uh, the local repository and the ro remote repository, they don't uh, sync up automatically. So we have to specifically tell them uh, to sync or to get the new updates. So the command for that is to get uh, the, uh, the, uh, the most up-to-date commits from the remote is simply uh, git fetch. And then we have to specify uh, where we want to fetch from. So from origin in this case. So if I now run this, then we get the most up-to-date uh, commit history from the remote. So let's run uh, the log again. And here, obviously, we need to run the log with the dash all option. Otherwise, we don't see the origin master branch. And here you can see now we have the fixed typo in readme uh, commit. So let's now then uh, update our local master branch to also uh, include those changes. So we want to merge in origin master into uh, master. So I'm going to say git merge origin master. And then we are going to see that now we have uh, this typo here is fixed. So let's run the log again. And now both of these branches are mm, at the most recent commit. And here, just as a side note again, I want to mention you could have also done this, uh, those two steps in just one step with the command git pull. But this would then have executed git fetch and git merge. But this way you have a little bit more control. So that's why I did it uh, like that. So that is, well, let's first look at the slides again. So this time we first created a new commit on the remote repository. And then we fetched those changes. And then lastly, we merged our, or we updated our local master branch and we merged in origin master in to master. So this is now what a typical workflow could look like on GitHub, where we either push our local changes to the remote or where we pull uh, remote changes to uh, the local repository. And now uh, as a next step, uh, as a side note, just I want to show a different way uh, for setting up a remote. Namely, what we have done uh, in this tutorial is we first created our local repository and then we connected it to a remote. And uh, But you can also do it the other way around where you first uh, 
create the remote repository and then simply clone it to your computer to have a local repository. So let's see how that works. In that case, let's again create a new repository. And let's just call this test. And then here in this case, now we check this box to initialize this re uh, repository with a readme. So now if we create that, then we immediately have our uh, repository or our remote with a readme. And now we can simply clone that uh, to our computer. So let's so let's go back here to the desktop and then we're going to use the command git clone and then we paste in, paste in the URL. If we run this now, it downloads uh, that repo. And if we now go into that and then run git log, we can see that we have an initial commit. So one commit is already done. And here we have then origin master and origin head and our master branch. So now you could then maybe start working on your code. So if you already know that you want to share your project, you can probably first create a remote and then simply copy it to your computer. So, and now uh, we have basically come to the end of this tutorial. Uh, and since we have covered a lot of different different uh, commands here, I've uh, put them all together into one slide. And I arranged them in such a way, here are the commands that are related to version control in general. So initializing Git or cloning a repository and then inspect uh, these commands are for inspecting the commit history. Here are the commands for creating commits. Then here the uh, commands for working with branches and then here the ones for working with a remote. And here are then all the options of the commands that we have used uh, throughout the tutorial. And now, uh, before I end this video, I want to make one more commit. And this is not really related to the tutorial, but I want to CD. Uh, okay, go back and then CD. Let's go into our project folder again. And this is just so that you're not wondering why there's all, uh, all of a sudden a supporting materials uh, folder. So I'm going to add this folder here. And this folder simply contains the slides that I've used and the code snippets. So let's create now a new commit for that. So let's say git status. Now we have the supporting materials. So let's folder, uh, let's add that to the staging area. Let's create a new commit for that. So that's then add supporting materials folder. And now let's just push this. So origin, uh, git push origin master. So now uh, this folder is pushed. So let's look again at the Git tutorial uh, repository, which is here. So now we have our supporting materials folder, and this will be then uh, probably the, uh, the repo that you can then download after I have uploaded the videos. So. With that now we have reached the end of this series, so thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in one of my other series.